It's the NFL on EA Sports, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Niners and the Seahawks. All that and more coming up next. With Mount Rainier in the distance, there are few cities finer on a clear afternoon than this one, and we have a picture-perfect day for football at Lumen Field in Seattle. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, the 49ers get ready to go on offense, and it's the Pro Bowler Brock Purdy at the helm in his third NFL season now out of Iowa State. And the great story of Brock Purdy continues. Had he been drafted in the first round, I think people would be singing his praises to the skies. But for whatever reason, people can't let go of the fact he's Mr. Irrelevant and they don't give him the credit he deserves. He is not just a system quarterback. He's a guy who enhances his team. Not just along for the ride, he's the one steering the ship. And without him, their ceiling significantly drops. Purdy going to the air right away. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive. And he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. Stay alert, don't jump early, and give them free yardage. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Out of the gun, Purdy. This goes to the tight end, Eric Saubert. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Well, this offense is wasting no time getting into the flow of the game. They've come out throwing. Two quick completions have this defense on their heels as they're already across midfield and driving. Back to throw, Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 29-yard line. The Niners' passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Now a second and ten. 
In motion, the tight end. Purdy sets up to throw again. Connects with Kittle underneath. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. They go play action here. Purdy. That is caught. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. And this third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. Now Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. George Kittle, 33 yards. And the 49ers will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. On paper coming in, you'd say that these guys are the better team by far, and they sort of showed their superiority there on the opening drive. Yeah, they came in the heavy favorite in this game, and even though they're on the road, they just took that just wiped it away, didn't they? They just said to everyone, we're the better team. We just showed it to you on this opening drive, and we expect to do it all game long. Jake Moody now for the point after. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. So this drive spans seven plays, and it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Seahawks set to go on offense here, and it is the pro bowler Geno Smith at quarterback Charles in his 12th NFL season. And Smith continues to show that his career resurgence hasn't been some fluke. He's brought a level of maturity, stability, and good play that allows him to compete with any team on any given week. The real question is whether or not he can become a championship caliber quarterback. Only time will tell, but for now, he's done enough to give this franchise reason to believe they can certainly get the job done. They'll run, it's Kenneth Walker. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Throwing now is Gino. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave them trying to convert on third and nine. Smith. He lets it fly from Lockett. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. The Seahawks will call on Michael Dixon on fourth down to punt this one away. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. 
They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 nothing lead. Of course they would. I and mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 nothing lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. The drive begins with Mason. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. On the ground again, it's Mason. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Now third down and seven. Purdy now to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And yeah, he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense, humming here in the early going. Here's Purdy. That's complete to the tight end, Saubert. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And there was a good opportunity to just went awry there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Purdy will look to throw again here. Connects with Kittle underneath. That he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stopped him short. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. They'll send the tight end in motion left. Off of play action. Here's Smith. And it's knocked away and incomplete. But they certainly came out firing in this one. And while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Geno now to throw. And Walker has it. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Smith now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. 
46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And he'll take it just outside the 40. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And out will come the offense as they take over. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Purdy looking to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. So the false start will back them up five. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Here comes third in the length of the football. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. Now they run. It's Mason. Dances by him, and he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Purdy. He's got Mason complete. Will go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. And throwing here, Purdy. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Short completion, just four yards, and that will bring up second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there. And across the chalk, into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. Jordan Mason from six yards away. And the 49ers are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead.
Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. It oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Extra point try now for Moody. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ballgame as they come up first and 10. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run again with Walker to about the 40-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. This is second and eight, as they've got it as we resume action. He'll fight his man, LaVisca Chenault. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 41-yard line. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. Well, every now and then I can speak from experience because I do know as a defender, it is awfully hard to stay with your man on these crossing routes because even if you don't get picked, there's a danger of being picked either by one of their receivers or maybe by your own defender. And on that play, that worked quite well. They'll fake it. Now Smith. That is taken in by the tight end fan. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. Well, some concern out there right now as we got an injury stoppage. It's DK Metcalf who's getting some help following that last play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. From the six now on second and three. Now Gino. End zone caught. Touchdown Seattle. Kenneth Walker from six yards away. And the Seahawks have got it back to within a score. 
They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They managed to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. A drive that time of six plays. And it was Ken Walker who finished things off for the touchdown catch. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Now Brock Purdy and the offense back out there. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass. So whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, the ball never hits the ground there either. Starting the drive with Mason on the ground. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards picking up the first. That was good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Back to throw, Purdy. Complete. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find a completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. Here's second and ten. Back to throw. Purdy on the screen. This is Mason. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short gain. The Niners on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. IU goes in motion. Purdy from the gun. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 34-yard line. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. They'll run here with Mason. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Connects with Kittle underneath. So the completion good for six yards, and it brings up third and five now. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Looking to throw. Purdy. And that is incomplete. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. 
third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to So that one on target, and it adds to this first-half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one-score lead, two-score lead, et cetera. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got to be pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then. But they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time and a first down. Walker now on first and 10. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. Seven yards on the pickup there. And it'll leave him with a second and three. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. It's caught. Lock it. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. He's got his running back out of the backfield. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. This is the tight end fan. And he's taken down inside the 30. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Throwing now is Gino. Going right back to Fant. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this. Back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. From the 21, here's second down and three. Straight ahead, Walker. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. 
They'll try for the first with Walker. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. And no field goal try here from the red zone offense out there. They'll go for it on fourth. They snap it to Smith. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. What an excellent end result for them. But let's go back to the decision, first of all, to go for it all on fourth down. A lot of pressure on the quarterback's shoulders, but they knew he could handle it. Makes the right read there, gets the ball to his receiver. They get the first down. It's now first and goal. Now Smith. Smith and Jigba making the play along the sideline. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. Throwing is Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. To the air again, Smith. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Seahawks are back within a score. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Now Myers for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Niners offense and Brock Purdy getting ready for this next possession. And he's had things all his way in this first half. The numbers sensational as he'll look to add to them with another drive here. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Here's Purdy. Over the middle complete. It's Mason. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down.
Out of the gun, Purdy. Got a man, that's Ayu. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 18 yards, first down Niners. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Shotgun now with Purdy. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Tyrell Dotson coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. But that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been coughing him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Ayuk goes in motion. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He'll get this into the hands of Ayuk. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 22-yard line. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So you got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Purdy looking to throw. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. The throwing here, Purdy. That'll be caught by Ayu. Touchdown, 49ers. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the 49ers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Now Moody for the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. That time, a six-play drive. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with a touchdown reception. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And the kick team down there quickly. They don't have to run as far as they used to. And they're able to stop him before he can even make it to the 15. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Off of play action, here's Smith. He lets it fly for Lockett. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. But whatever they called on defense, they made sure they were ready for the pass on that snap, made the proper adjustments, and helped force an incompletion. 
Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Geno now to throw. He's going to get this complete here to lock it. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Now Gino. He completes this to Walker. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start clawing back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Smith and Jigba with the grab. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10, right at the 40. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he gets this to the 35, good for a gain of five. Really fires up offensive linemen when the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Play action. It's Smith. Throw left side. Going to be caught by Chenault. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Blitz coming, and down he goes. 
He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. And there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long. Then here, just nothing available, and he's got to throw it away. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now Smith. He's got his big tight end, fan. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Myers' kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Niners offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would. And in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches where they've talked about, hey, we just want to put it in the hands of our defense and have them win the game? In this case, yeah, not, the case. not at all. You want to put it in the hands of your offense, but you always feel better about seeing defense because you think defense is a constant and offense kind of comes and goes. Today, <laughs> this game, no, they need their offense to stay on a really hot level. They've been hot so far. Mason. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. And they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Now Purdy. A dump off for Mason. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Purdy now to throw. He's got Mason complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. And it's a real luxury when you have a guy who can turn a short throw into a solid gain at any moment. Once he caught that ball, he ID'd where the open grass was and got there in a hurry to pick up a new set of downs for his offense. Now Mason. 
And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. They'll run again with Mason. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Eluding the pressure right. And he's got this down to the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. George Kittle with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Niners go up by two touchdowns. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. An extra point try now for Moody. And the lead is up to 14. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal. But they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Here's Walker to start the drive. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Excellent effort defensively. Tackle for loss goes to Leonard Floyd. I see a shake of the head as he gets up. And you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he powers his way up past the 30. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing now is Geno. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A first down and then some, 36 yards. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10, down at the 33. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. 
On the move to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, finding his way into the backfield. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and ended up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Here's Smith. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. The pressure really ratcheting up. They get the sack on first down. Then a near sack. They got to him there just as it was leaving his hand. Yeah, they might need to change their pass protection scheme a little bit. Maybe bring another guy into the backfield to help protect the quarterback. Because that was awfully close. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And yeah, that will be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Now the 49ers settling in for their next drive. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Here's Samuel. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Here's Purdy. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw it through contact and short of the sticks. Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Back to throw, Purdy. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. 
And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Second down, eight to go from the 28. Back to throw, Smith. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. To throw is Smith. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. Running left is Walker. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Smith. It's caught. Lock it. And Lock it. Going to pick up the Seahawks first down as he'll be taken down at the 46. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. First down for Lockett, and he's someone who's been a reliable weapon throughout his entire career. In fact, he doesn't get the credit he deserves. When it's all said and done, he's been one of the best receivers in Seahawks franchise history. Off of play action, here's Smith. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Leonard Floyd able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Well, partner, I would say just avoid play action, but that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. From the 50, it's Smith. That's going to be caught. It's Chanel. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 33. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. That's really good play design right there, and it's one that comes down to the offensive line. It's a deep in route, but it's only going to work if that line gives you time in the pocket to wait for the route to develop. Mission accomplished there as they pick up the first down. From the gun, it's Walker. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. 
Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Smith. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And it's third down. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Jordan Elliott in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now, and if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. The 49ers offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Purdy from the gun. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Second and ten. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Throw out wide is incomplete. The offense on third down, six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and ten. Purdy looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down in the process. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, 
I think he continued to do so. Play action. Now Purdy. Again, he'll find Samuel for the completion. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Purdy will look to throw again here. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. Purdy bootlegging it. That'll be caught by Ayuk. Touchdown 49ers. Brandon Ayuk, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the 49ers have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, Fantastic. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was Brandon Ayu capping it off with a touchdown reception. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And they have had their problems moving the ball through the air as we take you through some of the action from earlier. This secondary has played about as well as you can. Many times they've left this quarterback with nowhere to go with the football. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Geno now to throw. Out right to Smith and Jigba. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30 yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Play action. It's Smith going for Metcalf on the deep ball. It's caught inside the 25. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. DK Metcalf, 69 yards. And the Seahawks have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. You gotta understand situational football because they're playing with the lead here late in the ball game. So the back defender has gotta be as deep as the deepest receiver. Keep everything in front of you, rally up and make the play. Yeah, you would think they had the three score lead, now it's down to two, but three score lead here late, that they wouldn't give up a big pass play like that, but they did.
And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And that's pretty good coverage by the kick team as he'll only be able to get this past the 15-yard line and no further. The visitors' offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes a right read seemingly every time. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. A throwing here, Purdy. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. Shotgun now with Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game. It's a first down. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Purdy now to throw. That's caught by Jennings. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. The offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. They run the counter. Mason looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Mason, and the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Now a handoff up the middle. Mason, and he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And now right out of the two-minute break, We'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Samuel. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Up the middle they go. 
It's Mason, and he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. They got to get to the 23 here on third. Now Purdy. And that is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end... I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Yeah, he's got Smith and Jigba. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily, you pick up the guys downfield, and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not, and dropped him for no gain. Now Gino. He'll let this go deep for Smith and Jigba. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Well, these guys are not going to go out with their tails between their legs. They're going to keep taking their shots until the clock's at triple zeros. But that one, like a lot of others, winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Gino. And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for them. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. Oh. 
Purdy down to a knee, and that should be the final act of the ball game. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level for both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, or both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high-flying, but they took care of the ball. 